These are some of Hell's Kitchen's most unforgivable mistakes. And what this contestant did single-handedly tanked the entire dinner service. I think Lacey's comeback for the final dinner service after getting kicked out mid-service is the worst decision ever made on the show, bar none. I mean, they had to know it couldn't have gone well. Because as soon as she showed up, she instantaneously stirred up some tension among the contestants. This spider promised to behave, Paula, Andrea, and LA were very wary. I don't want anyone to get pissed off. Now, moving on. Paula took the initiative to guide Lacey on making the creme brulee during prep. You should definitely start with the creme brulee though, because yeah. that needs to cool and then set. But unfortunately, the first batch ended up looking something like this. Mmm, it's still a little soft, let me see. They're all curdled. Yeah, it was curdled, and this further added to the already tense atmosphere in the kitchen. What pissed me off is that she was actually smiling after messing up so bad. The audacity was real. My bad. And to nobody's surprise, the creme brulee wasn't selected for the final dish. Plus, Chef Ramsay had some choice words to say. That is not a creme brulee texture. It looks like scrambled eggs. But the real chaos unfolded during the dinner service when Lacey was handling the appetizer and garnish stations. Her first scallop salad ended up in a bad situation. Andrea. Yes, Chef! You know when it's overcooked. You can't serve that. That's not fine dining. But Chef Ramsay wasn't going to be quiet about it. He immediately called her out. Lacey, you put it on the plate and turned it over, hope she wouldn't see it. You can't do that to her. Yeah, she did try to sabotage Andrea with that move. I mean, really, why do you think she tried to conceal the error from Paula then? All Paula needed was some honesty, but Lacey, as in her name, was laced with lies. But that wasn't the end of it. When she was on the garnish station, Lacey became confused with the order for garnishes. Now I have... Never mind. It's just a lot of different stuff in a lot of different pans. And surprisingly, she blamed Paula for creating a menu that was too complicated for her to follow. Wow, how about that now, huh? It was frustrating to see her in the kitchen. I mean, what was she even complaining about? Some basic training and all the guidance you get during prep time should have prepared her for this service. However, her habit of sabotaging Paula's efforts was evident once again when she said this. What's he gonna do? Kick me off the show? Oh wait, he already did that. <laughs> oh yeah, every single member of the team was frustrated at this point. It's coming! One minute! What angers me even more was Lacey's behavior from before, where she continuously sabotaged the blue team by giving up and messing up dishes, acting more like a crybaby than a chef. I can't cook meat, chef! What is that? I don't know, chef! And not only in her last episode, but throughout the entire freaking season, she had the same annoying attitude going. I'm gonna go home. Oh, I hate you guys. I'm about to really go crazy. During her time on the show, she had efficiently destroyed food, caused numerous tickets to pile up, and led the boys to have mental breakdowns. And that's when Chef Ramsay had to make one decision that could bring back order into his kitchen. He kicked her out. I'm really not a bitch. I'm really a nice school person. And here she was, once again, trying to pull the same stunt, knowing that Paula's entire future depended on this one challenge. Chef Ramsay tried to push her up to speed, but she reverted back to her poor attitude, resulting in her giving up entirely. But Paula couldn't let her chances slide because of one irresponsible contestant. And so, she sent LA over to assist Lacey. Sometime later, when everyone called her out for the spinach, she claimed that she had enough of getting yelled at. Spinach, spinach! spinach. In the end, Paula lost the finals to Danny, and while Lacey may not be entirely at fault here, she certainly played a significant part in it. Chef Ramsay's decision to bring her back to help the top two contestants turned out to be a huge mistake, considering her problematic attitude and just, well, her behavior in general. But this next contestant was a fan of taking shortcuts, going as far as to borrow rice from a teammate and pass it off as his own dish. Now that's just ridiculous. I'm of course talking about Adam Laval from season 14. He kicked off the competition strongly during the signature dish challenge, even impressing Chef Ramsay with his first creation, earning a clean four points. But then things took a turn for the worse. In episode three, the famous chef introduced the Alaskan fish challenge. Millie, Medley, and Adam were paired up for this challenge. And the blue team eventually won, granting them a five minute head start, but that advantage didn't work out too well for Adam. He struggled to keep up, even with the lead. As the blue team put in hard work to impress Chef Ramsay, Adam realized that he wouldn't be able to cook his rice in time and needed some help from his partner. Do you have enough rice to go for two? Um, I got that. Seems like a thoughtful move, right? That's what teammates are for. But this decision turned out to be a major misstep. Adam and Millie were the last pair to present their dishes to the guest judge, Michael Simarusti. 
Adam's pan-seared halibut with grilled baby bok choy and basmati rice was impressive, managing to win over the judge Sima Rusti. However, when Millie presented his halibut francaise butter with bell pepper rice, both dishes featured rice. Hmm, that's suspicious, right? As these suspicions arose, Adam's face turned really pale. Oops, it looks like someone just got caught, huh? How did you guys both wind up with rice on the dish? Did you guys share on that one? Or? Naturally, Chef Ramsay wasn't going to let this slide. He quickly joined in on the suspicion and asked Adam if he had borrowed Millie's rice. What a clever little scheme they had going on, huh? And to everyone's disbelief, this is what Adam had to say. Yes, sir. Chef Ramsay wasn't fooled by Adam's games, and Adam knew that he had to come clean. He had no choice but to confess that he used Millie's rice, meaning that the dish wasn't entirely his. What a shame. Adam's dish was actually good enough for him to win the challenge for his team, and he even had a 5 minute head start. But he just had to cheat and give the point away to the red team. As a result, the blue team lost the challenge and was punished by taking part in the seafood delivery day and prepped the fish for the following service. Halibut that three people have to carry, then we have to scale and gut clean. Ouch, that must suck. Now, after a long and exhausting day, guess what the team was offered for lunch? Guys, it's peanut butter and jelly. I mean, peanut butter and jelly fish. Damn, what a delightful lunch, right? Adam should have cooked his own rice and spared him and his team from this horrendous punishment. But this next contestant from season 6 was way worse than Adam. During the first dinner service, Louis was holding down the meat station. However, when it came to the entrees, he made a critical mistake. Louis! Yes, sir! Who's put a lamb in the oven? Yes! Oh my god! Did he really just place raw lamb in the oven without seasoning or searing it first? I have no doubt that little move frustrated Chef Ramsay a lot. The famous chef took a moment to educate him on the importance of searing lamb first, explaining that it enhances the flavor and gives it a beautiful color. In response to Chef Ramsay's guidance, Louis' entire team came together to support him on the meat station, ensuring that such a mistake wouldn't happen again. You see, teamwork is crucial in the high-pressure kitchen environment, right? Get a bunch of pans on and get them searing high. Right over the heat. There you go. An hour into the service, the blue team was hustling to serve the appetizers. However, he got caught doing something really sneaky. Louis on the meat. Yep. He's cooking the spinach. Obviously, Joseph didn't know why. And Louis couldn't speak for himself. But why was he working on Joseph's station? Well, his reply is going to leave you scratching your head. So why are you cooking the spinach? I thought it went on a plate, sir. Chef Ramsay was equally puzzled by his response and immediately shut down his involvement with the spinach. He then emphasized the need to focus on the lamb, which was already causing enough problems. After some struggles, Louis managed to send up his lamb to the pass, and the condition of that lamb wasn't impressive. What is that? Did you bite that? Chef Ramsay quickly pointed out his poor cutting skills, even questioning if he had taken a bite out of it. But the situation escalated when Chef Ramsay discovered something horrifying. Look! 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 What the fuck is this? The sight of a significant amount of wasted lamb on the meat station was truly shocking. In a fit of anger, Chef Ramsay tossed all of it back onto the station, demanding for an explanation. And what was his explanation? Well, nothing. He just stood there with a blank face with absolutely no answer to give. And this was the final straw, leading to his on-the-spot elimination. Get out! He packed his bags, expressed his frustration towards Chef Ramsay, and made an exit by leaving through the delivery dock. But did he leave with grace? Absolutely not. He actually asked Ramsay to kiss his ass before departing. Well, good riddance, buddy. But you won't believe what this next contestant did. Somebody accused me of sabotaging their garnish, attempt to soil my reputation. During the dinner service, Jen manned the garnish station confident in her leadership skills. However, her confidence was quickly shattered when sous chef jockey rejected her dish. Dude, I'm the season. Jen, in an attempt to defend herself, argued fiercely, claiming that she had seasoned the dish properly and accused sous chef jockey of damaging his own palate. She even went as far as to suggest that there was enough salt to induce cardiac arrest. When called over by Chef Ramsay for a refire, she showed him some attitude. What am I doing wrong now, Chef? It's hard. Don't to talk to me like that. Her bitter tone infuriated him, leading to a heated exchange. And she still wouldn't shut up. I mean, because I see you looking with the look on your face. I mean, I'm okay. A young yes, lady, chef. who do you think you're talking to? But was sous chef jockey right? Turns out he was. Her tartar potatoes, disgusting. Despite brief moments of efficiency, Jen soon found herself slowing down the veterans once again, failing to communicate effectively with T and Brett. 
Her struggles in the kitchen continued, leaving her team frustrated and the service in chaos. In a heated exchange with T, she felt like her teammates were mocking her for being the odd one out and sent out portions of undercooked leeks for two duck entrees. What is she doing? Chef Ramsay was in no mood for her attitude. I gave you the creamy leek, Chef. That okay. Hey, hey. All of you run up here with me a minute. And of course, what happened next is one of Hell's Kitchen's most intense moments. You trying to clown me up in here right hey, now? Come here, you. Come here. I gave you the leak, Chef. What followed was a series of accusations, and they were all targeted toward the man himself, Chef Ramsay. Well, of course, she was shown the door, and in her exit interview, she expressed no regrets. She knew that she had a business waiting for her back home and numerously wished that she had told Chef Ramsay to shove her blue jacket up his ass and cough out blueberries. But you know what? Chef Ramsay had the final word, stating, Jen accused me of sabotaging her. The truth of the matter is, the only thing that sabotaged Jen tonight was her cooking. Amen. Some mistakes earn a lecture from Chef Ramsay, while some others get the boot. Those aren't die that I'd want to roll, but this contestant didn't get the memo. Because in the end, they got kicked out thrice. It was the first dinner service of the 11th season, and both teams were geared up to showcase their abilities. That night, tableside steamed mussels were to be served by Amanda Giblin and Christian Rosati. What's more, actors Deborah Ann Wool and Owain Yeoman dined at Hell's Kitchen. As the red team received their first order, Gina Aloise annoyed Mary Ponelt with her silly questions. And when Gina finally started to cook the scallops, the team got worried. Gina flipped the scallops way too many times, and it looked like they weren't cooking very well. When she finally sent her scallops to the pass, the team was worried that Chef Ramsay would force them to restart. But this is what he said. Who cooked them? I did, Chef. Excellent. Thank you. Wow, that was something no one expected. Meanwhile, in the blue team, when Ramsay called out their first order, they hardly gave a response, and this annoyed the famous chef. Then, Chef Ramsay had to ask them again, hoping to get a response from the team. Now, there was one contestant who wanted to stand out with his performance, and that was Sebastian Royo. Sebastian had never cooked Italian food before since he was a Mexican who loves spicy food. However, he wanted to impress Chef Ramsay by cooking the perfect risotto. But all he managed was an undercooked risotto, which left Chef Ramsay frustrated. Well, that was a failure. Anyway, as you know, Hell's Kitchen is all about collaboration. So, while Sebastian's risotto was trashed, Zach Womack had cooked the scallops to perfection. And this further frustrated both Ramsay and Zach, since these delicious scallops were now wasted. In the red team, Gina wanted to prove to her teammates that she could impress Chef Ramsay with her scallops again. But this time, she ended up annoying them by messing up her timing. Despite asking Nedra Harris on several occasions for the time, Gina continued to look confused. Then, when Chef Ramsay asked for the time on the order, Gina continued to pester Nedra. Well, Nedra ignored her, but when Gina was about to walk up to the pass, Nedra still needed two more minutes. When the two finally delivered their dishes, the scallops were rejected for being overcooked and watery. First of all, Gina was a confused mess, but what she did next was even crazier. She confused Chef Ramsay. Somebody else got to do risotto. What do you mean? Gina didn't think twice before throwing Nedra under the bus, and Nedra obviously wasn't happy about it. I mean, who would be? After all the drama, when Gina sent her refire to the pass, it was rejected for being too rubbery, and this angered Ramsay. Can't even hold it together for the second ticket. Get out. In the blue team, Sebastian got his refire accepted, and Zach came up with another round of perfectly cooked scallops. This guy was killing it. The blue team then started with their second ticket. And when Sebastian brought his capellini to the pass, it was rejected for being too spicy and disgusting. So, once again, Zach's perfectly cooked scallops were wasted. After Chef Ramsay urged Sebastian to get it together, Michael Landon gave him a little pep talk. And in response, Sebastian called him Mikey Wikey, much to the surprise of his teammates. Later, when he tried to communicate with Zach on the timing, Zach didn't respond. So, Sebastian went right back to poking fun at people, and this time, he called Zach Zacky Wacky. But there was one person who didn't appreciate this behavior in the kitchen, and that was Chef Ramsay. And once he heard Sebastian calling out names, all hell broke loose. Zacky Wacky. Sorry, I apologize about that, Chef. Yeah, do me a favor. Get out! Despite being asked to leave, Sebastian tried to return to his station from behind the kitchen, but who was he trying to fool? Chef Ramsay then booted him out in the most iconic way. Second time, get out! Seeing the blue team in disarray, Christian decided to help his team out by serving mussels to the blue diners, even though some of them didn't order. And I have to say, that was a smart idea to buy some time and keep the diners happy. In the red team, Nedra and Mary managed to push out several orders of appetizers, and the team moved on to the entrees. 
But they soon stumbled when Danielle Bourne got completely lost and failed to remember the tickets. She then revealed to Susan Heaton that she had never worked in a brigade before. Danielle then grabbed the ticket, wondering if it was the one that Chef Ramsay had read. But when Ramsay saw this happening, he schooled her. One, two, three, yeah, yeah. and it's that. You're making such hard work out of nothing. In the blue kitchen, John Scallion and Zach finally finished their appetizers and moved on to the entrees. When Michael sent his lamb to the pass, it came out raw, much to Chef Ramsay's dismay. In the blue kitchen, Barrett Bear was ready to serve his Wellingtons. But Michael still needed some time on his lamb, which annoyed Barrett. Then, when they finally sent their meat to the pass, Chef Ramsay sent it right back. He believed that the lamb had more bone than meat and that the Wellingtons were overcooked. Ramsey was already frustrated, but as he talked to the blue team about it, guess who showed up? Sebastian! Oh no, he shouldn't have done that one. When Sebastian started to request that Chef Ramsey let him get back to his station, Ramsey lost it. You come back downstairs again, you'll be leaving through the front door. Now get out! And this time, Sebastian wasn't the only one to go. Jeff Ramsey asked him to take Michael and Barrett along with him and to not return to the service again. In the red kitchen, Chef Ramsey was annoyed seeing the black kale missing. And when Ramsey asked about it, neither Danielle nor Susan answered. Later, when they brought their garnishes to the pass, Susan's garnish came out rubbery, much to Chef Ramsey's dismay. So he decided to kick her out. After, when Chef Ramsey reminded Danielle about the ticket, she got confused since she didn't know if he wanted the refire along with the new order. Ramsey had had enough of her and kicked her out too. Or do you just need the two chicken and two Wellington? Get out! Back in the blue kitchen, Anthony was at the meat station and got his lamb accepted. But Jeremy Madden pissed Chef Ramsey off when he failed to repeat the next order even after Ramsey repeated it three times. It was now Jeremy's turn to leave the kitchen. One hour and a half into the service, Mary was assigned to the garnish station in addition to her station. Understandably, with two stations to manage, Mary was overwhelmed. One of the customers even received a dish without garnishes. It needs garnish. You're absolutely right. My apologies. Give me two minutes. Since she was struggling to get the garnishes done, Chef Ramsay urged someone to help her out. He then saw Jacqueline Baldessari doing nothing but hydrating herself, which made Ramsay furious. And obviously, she was the next one to leave the kitchen. Get out! Get out! Back in the blue kitchen, things hadn't got any better. When Dan sent his garnish up, it came out undercooked, and when John sent out his risotto, it was overcooked. Chef Ramsay was just about done with these guys. Take that on yourself and get the f*** out of here. The famous chef was already angry with the blue team because of their performance, but Ray Alonghi made them even more furious. At this point, I didn't even think that was possible. When Chef Ramsay asked Ray to taste the risotto, you won't believe what Ray did. He used his finger, and this made Chef Ramsay infuriated. And, well, I don't have to tell you what followed. Well, bye-bye, Ray. See you in the dorms. Later on, when Anthony brought his risotto to the pass, Chef Ramsay rejected not only the dish, but also his presence in the kitchen. This left Zach as the only remaining chef in the blue kitchen. But how much could one man do? On top of the pressure of handling almost all the stations, Zach started to feel unwell due to dehydration. Oh, oh my god. But he failed to give up. He soon got back to the kitchen and started working on the entrees. This man is a total beast. Christian was then called back to the kitchen. And along with sous chef James and sous chef Andy, they finally started serving the entrees. In the red kitchen, the team was back on track and was pushing out the entrees quickly. But Zach wasn't far behind since both teams finished their service together. Post dinner service, the red team was declared as the winner, but Chef Ramsay praised Zach for his commitment. You give it your all. Yes, Chef. That's the kind of commitment I want to see. He deserved every bit of it. He was a one-man army indeed. While this service saw the most contestants being kicked out of the kitchen, this next service is the worst performance by the red team yet. It was the second day of dinner service for the All-Stars. That night, a fresh seafood appetizer was served tableside by Michelle Tribble and Giovanni Filippone. What's more, John Ram, Zach Ertz, Alyssa Nair, and Juki Johnston dined in. The blue team received their first order and it was from Alyssa and Juki's table. Chef Ramsay really wanted the orders to go out without any problems or mistakes. But we all know that wasn't gonna happen. Nick Peters Bond and Benjamin Knack were the first to finish and swiftly got their dishes accepted. With a great start, the blue team pumped out their appetizers. In the red kitchen, Dana Cohen and Elise Harris were pushing out their appetizers just as well and quickly moved on to the entrees. As Barbie Marshall and Manda Palomino were working on their entrees, Ashley Nichol pissed Chef Ramsay off. She's looking at a watch. No, I'm sorry, Chef. She's no. a little bit late for the date. <laughs> 45 minutes into the service, the blue team was handling their entrees. 
As Chef Ramsay called out the orders, Josh Trovato didn't give a single response, making Ramsay irritated. When Josh gave an excuse for being focused on cooking his meat, Chef Ramsay sarcastically thanked him. Then, Van Hurt made Chef Ramsay impatient when he delayed sending out the salmon order. Despite the problems, they got their order accepted and the blue team continued to push out their entrees. In the red kitchen, as Barbie got ready with her meat, Manda wasn't ready with the garnishes. Seeing this, Chef Ramsay became frustrated and accused Manda of dragging the red team down. Then, Robin Almodovar pissed Chef Ramsay off by sending a raw salmon to the pass. Manda can't even get her head round two tables at the same time. Robin and Manda had already irritated Chef Ramsay enough, but Ashley added fuel to the fire by not paying any attention. Watch your nails, watch your nails. Oh my god. In the blue kitchen, everyone was ready with their dishes, but Josh was late with his, and that made Chef Ramsay really impatient. But the wait was surprisingly worth it since his dish was accepted. The blue team continued to push out entrees at a great pace, and Ramsay loved the momentum. In the red kitchen, the red team was working on their refire. After Chef Ramsay asked for a time on the refires, Robin tried to communicate with Barbie, but Barbie rudely shut her down since she was talking to Ramsay. This attitude surprised everyone on the team. Seeing Barbie and Robin's tug of war, Chef Ramsay was dismayed. I haven't dropped my salmon yet, I need to know how long you can lamb. When the red team sent the refire to the pass, Chef Ramsay rejected every single one of them. And, well, I can't tell you how infuriated he really was. What does that mean? Last chunk! In the meantime, the blue team was still working really hard. The red team got their third attempt accepted and got started with their next ticket. As Robin and Ashley brought their dishes up to the pass, Chef Ramsay surprised the red team by calling the blue team over. But he excluded Nick and Giovanni since they had already started on their desserts. And just then, Chef Ramsay found Ashley's overcooked lobster wellington and Robin's ice-cold halibut and was done with the red team. It was time to kick all of them out, and this is how the famous chef sent them packing. Get the f*** out! Chef Ramsay then deemed the red team's performance to be worse than the opening night and criticized them for failing to bounce back. In the fifth episode of season 8, both teams were getting ready for the prom night dinner service. As both teams began their orders, Emily Kutchen sent out crab cakes that were soggy. What's more, Boris Polshuk ended up cooking 10 crab cakes when only two were ordered. Both teams were driving Chef Ramsay up the wall with their mistakes. But what Melissa Donny did next made Chef Ramsay lose his cool. After only a half an hour into the dinner service, the red team only served three tables of appetizers. Despite this, Donnie decided to get started on the filet mignon. Jeff Ramsey was so pissed that he asked her if she wanted to go home. But just you wait till you see how many filets were ready to be served. To everyone's horror, this is what Chef Ramsey found. 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. There's 23 on board, Chef. So what? Why are you cooking them now? That was the entire batch of orders for the night. Chef Ramsay couldn't believe how Donnie could be so stupid to prepare the entire batch. They weren't only prepared well ahead of time, but Donnie had also overcooked them. What a massive waste! On top of this, Polshuk from the blue team sent out crab cakes that were cold. While the blue team had a slow start because of this, they still managed to send out food. Later on, Chef Ramsay found some disgusting purple goop on the red team's plate and Kuchin sent out raw halibut. This service was testing the limit of Chef Ramsay's patience. One mistake followed another, but Chef Ramsay lost it when Donnie walked up with beef that was rare. Chef Ramsay still wasn't over her filet mignon blunder, so he instantly started lecturing her. Just as he was explaining what needed to be done, Nona Sively rudely interrupted the famous chef. Chef Ramsay immediately called her out and asked her to take over his place in the kitchen. And how he did it is well worth watching. Let me put them back in the oven. Explain to your team. There you go. Considering Donnie's huge blunder that day, it surprised all of us when the one who was eliminated was Kutchins. Donnie wasted so much food for crying out loud. The next day, the blue team was in for a treat. Chef Ramsay transferred Donnie to the blue team. While the red team was ecstatic, the same couldn't be said about the blue team. But Chef Ramsay gave Donnie one last chance. The only thing she had to do was prove that she was worthy of being in the kitchen. But she failed. During the next dinner service, Donnie was at the fish station. When she first sent scallops to the pass, they came out raw. Then on the refire, she charred the hell out of them. On the third attempt, it was rejected yet again for being overcooked. Donnie then revealed that there were no scallops left to work with. Guess how much she wasted? Rob McHugh has the answer to that one. Melissa must have cooked about 10, 10 pounds of scallops all cooked off for the garbage. Chef Ramsay was furious. 
thinking on his feet, he simply asked the blue team to replace the scallop salad with rock shrimp salad and continue with the service. In the end, both teams failed miserably and were named joint losers. There are deliberations that result in very shocking eliminations, but in this episode, almost everyone knew who was going to leave. To no one's surprise, Donnie was booted out before she could even waste more food. But this next contestant screwed up Hell's Kitchen's first ever dog show. While all the contestants were really excited to make finger licking food, this contestant got confused about who he was cooking for. Uh, I already have a bad feeling about this one. In season 13, Chef Ramsay hosted the first ever Hell's Kitchen dog show. Wow, now isn't that gonna be exciting? The culinary genius had to come up with some interesting challenges, one of which was the dog show tasting challenge. For this challenge, both teams would have to make two appetizers and three entrees for the menu. And the team with the most chosen items would win the challenge. The teams had 45 minutes to cook their dishes, and because the blue team had one extra member, one of them would have to sit things out. While almost everyone understood the task at hand, Say Dancy believed that the dish they were cooking was actually for the dogs. So she decided to make braised beef for them. It wasn't until everyone had finished making their dishes that Dancy realized her huge mistake. But it was already way too late. All she could say was this. I look around and I realize, oh my god, these are human portions. I thought we were cooking for dogs. It doesn't surprise me that she was the only one who cooked food for the dogs. And let's not forget that she took great care that it was dog friendly. When Chef Ramsay saw the dish, you have to hear what he said. Or does that sound f***ing ridiculous? It looks like a dog shat all over my plate. The blue team had to drop Dancy's dish. There was no way they could serve dog food to the customers. While the dish crushed Chef Ramsay's hopes for the first ever dog show, there was one contestant who brought back the spirit of the competition. This is what Hell's Kitchen is all about. There are failures, and then there are successful stories that follow. During the entree round, most of the dishes turned out to be average, but there was one that stood out from the others by a great margin. When Jennifer Salhoff presented her dish, Chef Ramsay had no idea that he was in for a surprise. Her pan-seared chili and sea bass with spicy heirloom tomato broth was so good that it was not only praised for being the best dish of the day, but also named as the most beautiful dish in the competition so far. Thanks to this dish, Salhoff managed to save the day, but this next service was so full of mistakes that Chef Ramsay found it impossible to carry on without losing his mind. So what exactly did he do? He shut the kitchen down. In the third episode of season 5, before the dinner service even started, Chef Ramsay revealed that it was going to be a steakhouse special. He also revealed that they would be doing double seating. This meant that one team would cook while the other would be serving, and then they would have to switch it up for the next seating. It was decided that for the first seating, the blue team would cook and the red team would serve. However, the red team was moving at a sluggish pace with writing tickets, and Lacey D'Angelo was the worst. Chef Ramsay and Jean-Philippe were beginning to get annoyed since only if the kitchen received its tickets could they start cooking their orders. 20 minutes in and the blue team finally received their first ticket. While they were working on their first order, Charlie McKay had forgotten to get the shrimp for the Caesar salad on the grill. But then suddenly, Chef Ramsay spotted something. He was so alarmed that he shouted back by saying, Your cloth's on fire! Your cloth's on fire! What was he doing? How could he miss something this disastrous? 30 minutes into the service, Ben Wolonka sent his desserts to the pass. Chef Ramsay was furious because it pretty much looked like all the contestants were daydreaming at their stations. What are you dreaming of? Are you stupid? No, Chef. You got cheesecake made as well. How could he be so lost? How could you send out desserts before the appetizers were even ready? In the meantime, Giovanni Filippone's steaks were coming back to the kitchen for being raw. With only 30 minutes left for the blue team service, Jean-Philippe realized that D'Angelo hadn't even sent out one of the tickets to the kitchen. This one was a total loser. You just won't believe what she told Jean-Philippe when he asked her about it. She said, I have to go up there and tell him to fire it. Well, who's gonna, who else gonna do it? Jean-Philippe, I've never waited tables before. Gosh, can you believe that? She was expecting the tickets to walk themselves to the kitchen. When Chef Ramsay found out about D'Angelo's mistake, he was furious. But she didn't care. Chef Ramsay asked the team to get on it, but Filippone revealed that there was only one filet left. So Seth Levine was asked to prep another one. But Levine had no idea what to do. While he was asking McKee for directions, Chef Ramsay happened to see it. He called this situation pathetic, but it was only worsened when Chef Ramsay saw Levine put something in the fridge. Ugh, what was he up to now? Chef Ramsay found an entire chunk of the best portion of meat butchered for a small piece of filet. 
The famous chef was so pissed that the entire chunk of meat was wasted that this is what he did next. We f***ing wasted the most expensive part! Look at it! What are you gonna do, get daddy to buy you a new one? But would things turn around for the better in the second seating? This time, it was the red team's turn to cook and the blue team's turn to serve. As the red team got started with their first ticket, Colleen Creek forgot two orders of Caesar salad and Chef Ramsay accused her of doing it on purpose. But Creek couldn't keep her mouth shut. She talked back to Chef Ramsay and you already know what happened next. Look at me, full salad. Hey madam, you're f pathetic. Yes chef. This was indeed a really hellish service. I mean, almost every other contestant was goofing around. With only 5 minutes left before the service concluded, Heinley was still pushing out entrees to the dining room. But Carol Scott mistook an order of New York strip loin for ribeye. There you go. The team was back to being a bunch of bozos. Before they could even correct the mistake, Chef Ramsay ended the service. While this service was doomed to be a failure right from the very beginning, this next service was so full of mistakes that Chef Ramsay kicked not one, not two, but five contestants out of the kitchen. Oh, I promise you, this is gonna be a crazy one. In the fourth episode of the 10th season, during the dinner service, the red team hoped to bounce back from their loss and the blue team was looking forward to another winning night. When Chef Ramsay called out the red team's first order, Danielle Rimmer was so confused that she asked her teammates about it much to their annoyance. After clarifying the order, when she sent her risotto to the pass, it was slammed for being raw and under seasoned. Jeff Ramsey couldn't help but berate her for being such a mess. Rimmer continued to maintain the same stride for the rest of the service. Her lack of communication slowed the entire team down. She even decided to deliver her dish to the pass without communicating with Robin Amudavar first. One hour and 15 minutes into the dinner service, both teams moved on to the entrees. Mero wanted to redeem himself when he got the chance to work at the fish station, but when he sent his cod to the pass, it was still raw. This was only the beginning of Chef Ramsay's long and disastrous night. Cat food. Properly. But instead of bouncing back to a good pace, Meryl ended up burning the refire. To make matters even worse, since it was the last portion of cod left, they had to knock it off the menu and replace it with sea bass. Chef Ramsay was already angry with the mistakes, but what Meryl did next was the last straw. When Chef Ramsay called out the revised order, everyone replied to him with a loud yes chef. But Meryl had something entirely different to say. He said this. Coming right now, baby. It's coming, baby. You cook like a baby. What happened again, chef? Get out! This was followed by Roshni Gurani's frustrating performance when she sent out Wellingtons that were stone cold and raw. She was the next contestant to follow Meryl out of the kitchen. But wait, we're not done yet. Though, it's a shame that you got this far into the video and still haven't dropped a massive like down below. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe to my channel for more amazing content like this? It's free, so why not just do it? Now, back to the video. Meanwhile, in the blue kitchen, when Don Savage sliced up the steak, Royce Wagner told him that it was raw, but Savage ignored him and went on with it. Seeing the raw steak, Chef Ramsay was frustrated. But when he kept calling out wrong timings for the refire, Chef Ramsay sent him walking right out the door. The red team finally sent out their first entree order, only to find out that the spinach was too garlicky and the sauce for the Wellington was really cold. Chef Ramsay then kicked Rimmer and Alma Devar from the kitchen. With nearly half the chefs being kicked out of the kitchen, the rest of the chefs from both teams continued and surprisingly finished the service. So these were the worst mistakes to have ever been made on Hell's Kitchen. If you ask me, the whole blunder with the dog food was the worst of them all. I mean, yeah, it's not good to waste food, serve raw steaks, and all that. But serving dog food is a totally different thing. Maybe someday we'll have a Hell's Kitchen challenge dedicated to dogs. That's actually a pretty interesting idea. I mean, why not? While I draft my petition for this request, I'll say goodbye for now. Thanks for watching, guys!